Good evening, brothers and sisters. We are now going to have what we call our Eucharistic healing service. I will uh, speak um, for a short time and then Father Emmett will bring the blessed sacrament. Jesus is here. Uh, down through the auditorium and Jesus who sees everything. He will know what you need and he sees what you need. And there's nothing impossible. You know, it's so easy, we, we say these words often because it repeats what, what Jesus said. You know, <clears throat> when the parents came to him and said, if you can do anything, please do for their child. And Jesus said, all things, everything is possible for those who believe. And believing in Jesus, the miraculous happens. And there's somebody here tonight. Did she come up on the platform here? The lady here? Who has, is going to relate to you, before I uh, continue, a wonderful testimony of what, the, through the intercession of our beloved Saint Faustina, but of course, saints intercede, we all intercede, but Jesus is the one who does the healing. So just listen to this mother as she shares with you a wonderful miracle that happened to her own son. Hi, my name is Marion, and my youngest son, Michael, who's age 38, on the 16th of March last year, he went to work and took a massive heart attack. And later that day, they told us that they used defibrillators on him eight times. And he was dead going in the ambulance. He was dead arriving at the matter. And between the times of the defibrillators, he was 46 minutes dead. And then the next day, we were told he was brain damaged. And I asked, could he be blessed? Well, I asked someone, would they bless him with the St. Faustina relic? And they came in and they blessed him. And on the Wednesday, they did scans, and he was massively brain damaged. He had a catastrophic brain injury. Every particle of his brain was gone. And then he was brain dead. So I organized his funeral. We said our goodbyes. And the next morning, I went in to donate his organs. And one doctor said, we will hold on. And then on the Saturday, I had no choice. They were turning off the machine. And I asked them to wait till the Sunday. So they turned off the machine on Sunday. And they said he might breathe for 20 minutes. He might breathe for an hour. But if they put a tube in his neck, he might breathe, but he'd be vegetate for the rest of his life. He would never, ever do anything again. So I said no to the tube in his neck. They took out the machine and he started breathing on his own. So he was three weeks in a coma and he opened his eyes and I was ecstatic, but he was blind. And then he went to CCU and they used to lift him with the hoist from the bed to the wheelchair and back. And he was in nappies. He was never, ever going to do anything. And he started, he woke up. After three weeks, he woke up. He was blind. And then, I think Easter Sunday, he started talking. His clearest word was the F word. And then he, he was five and a half months in the Matter Hospital. And then he went to Dunleary. He could read, but he couldn't write. They got him to write again. And then he went from there to Donnybrook. And he was discharged last week. He made a complete recovery. His brain has healed. And there's no scarring, lesions, or bleed to the brain. I used to pray each day to Jesus, the divine mercy, to put his hands on his head. So I used to pray and ask Jesus to just put his hand on the back of his head and his forehead and heal his brain and everything would come. And when I told Michael this, he said, that was a very easy job you were giving to Jesus. <laughs> but yesterday, he returned home to his own house to live independently and he hopes to go back to work. 
and his sight is 100%. What a testimony. Praise God. Let's pray and ask the Lord now to give us the faith to believe that nothing is impossible. Lord Jesus, we adore you here tonight. And we thank you, Jesus, for this great miracle. We know that you are alive. We know that nothing is impossible for those who believe. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would please, Lord, please, Jesus. There are many sitting in this auditorium listening to this powerful testimony and who are praying and hoping and desiring a miracle, a grace, a healing. So Jesus, present here, we ask that you will open our hearts, Lord. Help us to believe. We ask you, Mary, to come with us into the presence of Jesus. We ask you, may you intercede that the Holy Spirit may be upon us, that we may be filled with expecting faith. We ask all of this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> you know, every time I share about have a Eucharistic healing service, I always think that this is the most powerful way for Catholics to have a healing service because, you know, the Lord spoke to me many years ago out in Mexico, actually where the Pope was in Juarez, and revealed to me then one night after I had seen many miracles happen during Mass, many miracles. Um, I saw a little Down syndrome boy, totally healed, child burnt, new skin, all kinds of miracles over a period of eight hours. And that night I went back into the United States across the border from Mexico. And it was then that the Lord revealed to me at three o'clock in the morning when I couldn't sleep and I kept thinking, I, you know, in Ireland we go to, Ma I went to mass since I was like three. Every Sunday we went to mass. And I kept thinking, why did God bring me to one of the poorest, poorest places in Mexico? It was a garbage dump. There was no church. They were out, we were out on the side of a dump. Thousands of people. And this priest who had evangelized them and invited me there to pray with them. Well, I didn't need to pray because God put on the most extraordinary demonstration of miracles. And that night when I got out and knelt the side of my bed, I heard in my heart the Lord saying, people travel all over the world to see signs and wonders. People will go after people like me, people who are in healing ministries. They will travel all over. And yet, I am on the altars of the world. Every day I come and I'm in the tabernacles of the world. I want you to go into the world and I want you to tell people that if they would come to me in the Eucharist, if they would come to me in my Eucharistic presence and believe, they will see signs and wonders. And it was then, brothers and sisters, that I began my ministry. At that time, I was working with Father Kevin, but we uh, it's nearly 40 years now since we started our ministry around the world. And we have these huge Eucharistic uh, healing services in stadiums all over. Um, 30, 40, the biggest crowd we ever had, would you believe it, was in Poland, at Czestokowo, uh, the, the Black Madonna, as we call her. We had 300,000 people at that shrine. And to see them all focused on the Eucharistic Jesus. And over these years, we have seen that the stories in the gospel, when Jesus lived in his physical body on earth, and when he did all these miracles, they're still happening. He never left. And over long periods of time, when healing 
was very much part of the early church, very much part of the miracles of the apostles. And, but over the period of time, it became exceptional, where you had to go to Lourdes or Fatima, or here in Ireland, you had to offer it up. You know, to think you're sumptuous for you to be thinking, well, why should I expect to get healed? And, or we had to earn the healing. If you are very holy and saintly, but then people thought, I shouldn't ask because maybe it's not God's will. And after all, I have to, you know, accept it. And people say things like, well, such a one is worse off than me. I feel ashamed to ask. But you see, Jesus in the Gospels, he continuously healed people. And he was constantly given the apostles' teachings. And just briefly to look at some of them before we pray for healing. And how it's happening today. Every one of the miracles in the Gospel are happening today. The same, almost identical. I'll give you the first one. Just, I'm picking them out briefly. When we talk about the spiritual healing, remember when the man was lowered through the roof and his friends brought him because he couldn't walk and they had one thing in mind to get this man in front of Jesus. They brought him to Jesus, but they couldn't get in, so they lowered him through the roof. And when they put him in front of Jesus, keep in mind that the apostles were in a school of learning. And in many ways, Jesus was putting priorities and showing them what was important. Because physical healing is wonderful. But Ralph Martin says, you know, what's the point if you have a healthy body and go to hell? Because it's not the body that lives forever, it's the soul. So it's the first Thing Jesus wanted to teach was when that man was lowered in front of him he looked at the man and he marveled at the faith he commended them and then he said to the man your sins are forgiven they were horrified that's not why they brought him they brought him to be physically healed but Jesus could see that his soul, we don't know what was going on in that man's life. But I, I often think one time, way back in the beginning of the ministry, when I began the ministry, I was still teaching. And uh, this man came to see me. And he said to me, now, sister, I want you to pray for my leg. I have a very bad leg. And I said to him, well, <clears throat> I'll pray for your leg, but I'll pray for your soul too. I said, don't worry about my soul. Just pray for my leg. It's my leg that's killing me. <laughs> and so I prayed for his leg, but I also prayed for his soul. And he came back to me later, and he had a terrible awful serious moral problem he was living a very bad life but he told me himself he said you know I didn't believe in you I didn't believe in end but he said when you put your hand on me he said something happened and from that moment I saw my God showed me my sins and he got the grace to go to confession same thing I didn't know anything, and I didn't say to him, your sins are forgiven, because I couldn't say it to him. <laughs> but I, I was able, through, just through praying. See, don't ever forget that the most important thing in your life and mine is not good health. Good health is a gift. God, it may not be God's will that I get healed the way I want, but it is God's will that I'm spiritually healthy. I can guarantee, and I say this all the time to people, and especially on my par the parish missions, the one thing Jesus wants is that you know him. The one thing he wants, if you say, you know, I'm always saying this, Jesus, I find it hard to pray. Jesus, I want to love you. I want to do your will. 
I want to be a sinner. He wants that for us. That is his will. We're not asking for something that, if it's your will. It is his will. But now, if you prayed as, or asked me to pray for you, which people have, to win the lotto, mightn't be God's will at all, or if you ask me to pray, you know, for something else, even if it's a physical healing. But God will always give you what's better. Sometimes he uses sickness or some tragedy in order to get us to where he wants us to be so we become holy. But don't ever forget that the first healing that is needed, and Jesus showed that, is the soul. And pray for it all the time. That's why we have confession. I remember Father Kevin and myself in um, Omaha. We went to give a parish mission, and uh, many of the people came, and they were um, looking for Sister Breach. There was no Sister Breach ministering that night, but at confession, there was confession. And a man went to confession. Only, he was very disappointed. He came with his child who was dyslexic. But he heard the announcement, and he and his wife went to confession. He hadn't been for a long time, but unknown to Father Kevin, whom he went to confession to, he had polio, stricken with polio when he was younger. And in the confessional, he began to feel something, but he thought, well, it's nothing happening. He didn't, never dreamt that anything was taking place in the muscles of his leg. But the next morning, when he got up out of bed, his calf of his leg withered, had begun to develop. He was completely healed. And I remember he came and witnessed the whole church. He was the, he was the president or whatever you call it, manager of the bank. The whole bank was at the mission. They weren't all Catholic. But he told them what happened, and they came. But what happened was that Jesus healed his leg. And then spread it around. It was used as a miracle to bring people. And people wanted to go to confession because they realized that Jesus was in that sacrament. That the, he never saw me. And the wife called up and said, she was so surprised. She said, and you know, Father Kevin, he didn't even see Sister Breach. <laughs> and we said, nobody saw Jesus. You know, Another beautiful teaching Jesus gives is healing at a distance. You know, the centurion said, please come and heal my servant. And Jesus said, I will come. And then he, would, he heard these words. Oh, you, you don't have to just say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus spoke. He said, go home, your servant will be healed. I'm just paraphrasing it. And at that moment, the servant was healed. That's healing at a distance. That's intercessory prayer. He asked and he believed. And I remember in, in some years ago, I prayed with, a, a, um, you may have heard the story, with a pilot in the United States who wasn't there. His friend, who was the doctor, skeptical, but he decided, I'm going to go up after Mass and ask this nun would she see my friend who's a pilot on dialysis? But I couldn't because I was leaving to travel. But I said, I'll pray with him on the phone. And I called him, said a brief prayer some years ago. And I went away to Latin America for two months. I came back and the doctor kept saying to the nuns, when is sister coming home? Well, to make a very long story short, I never saw that pilot. But I did pray through the wires of a phone. And when he went in for dialysis, the doctor, he said to the doctor, you know, something, I don't know if I'm imagining something has happened. He was healed, but I didn't know at the time what he had. I just knew he wasn't well. Well, a doctor friend of mine came in from Canada and I was telling him of this pilot who was healed and how the medical people were very interested to getting me to speak to them, to pray with them. It's very unusual. And he said to me, you know, I do surgery. I, the, the, what he was healed of, 
you know, whatever cancer it was, that's my field. And I would very much like as a surgeon to meet this man. Could I meet the doctor? So I arranged. And he came back and he said to me, you don't give God the credit. Do you know what happened to him? He said the first thing that happened was that this man had cancer of the kidney and his kidney was removed and now the other kidney is beginning to be affected and he said after praying and I prayed for him not just on the phone but I, I did pray myself for him as I do for everybody at my adoration when they examined him he had his own cancerous kidney healed and the kidney that was surgically removed was back. <laughs> See? That's why the doctors couldn't, they, you know, you can take credit, you can give it to chemotherapy and different treatments, you know, that God works through the skills of medicine and doctors and, you know, oftentimes doctors are very slow to give the credit to God. But on this one, they could not say that it was them. That's healing at a distance. I could stand here for hours and tell you. Intercessory prayer, when you pray, don't be saying things like, you know, well, if I could get the person to fly in and see Sister Breach, if I could get the, you know, prayer reaches the end tonight at this Eucharistic healing service. You pray for your loved ones, wherever they are. And when Jesus is walking through this auditorium, you ask Jesus to go walk into the lives of your sick people, whatever is wrong with them, physical, spiritual, or physical, whatever, mental, whatever. There is no distance. Jesus is alive. And he's constantly calling us, believe in me. Just like that mother give the testimony. Who would have believed? I constantly hear this about, um, you know, the doctor said there's nothing can be done. I went to a reunion over in Tampa where I used to teach years ago. And a woman came over to me and she said, oh, Sister Breed, I'm so delighted to see you. She said, you know, 17 years ago, I had a couple of weeks to live. The doctors give me up and I'm still here. She said, you know, the doctor had to apologize because Jesus took over. <laughs> you know, this is what, you know, don't be, cl clap him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And let me say a word about God's will. How do you um, cope with, you know, well, you know, it's not God's will. And um, if it's God's will, my advice to people is, you pray and beg Jesus because God's will will come to pass, whether you like it or not. Now, if you pray, what happens to you? It's not God doesn't change. It's like divine grace opens our whole life to the grace of God poured into us. And we get supernatural grace to accept God's will. If it's not God's will, he doesn't want us to be making up his will for him or saying, I can't ask because it's not God's will. How do you know? You, keep, you pray and say, Jesus, I want to be healed. I'd love to be healed and keep begging him. You don't make Jesus feel good by saying, well, if it's your will or it's not your will. He just loves you to ask. And as you ask, he will change you, not him. We get transformed and we get divine grace to accept God's will. And God's will, when people live in the will of the Father, they're happy. Um, I think of a story. I went to California one time and this little 80-year-old nun was all excited. She was charismatic and she was full of the Holy Spirit. So she brings me around, it was a retired sisters uh, center for elderly sisters. And she brings me into the first sister, who was only in her 50s, but she was completely, she had very bad arthritis. 
And the wee nun is all excited to see Sister Breach come. And she said, Sister Mary Ann, Sister Breach is going to pray with you for healing. And the one looks at me and she says to me, I don't want to be healed. And I said, well, sister, I'll say a little prayer. And she was really cross with me. And, and she, the, the charismatic says, no, sister, you'd love, it's lovely to get Sister Breach to pray. She's known all over the world that she was trying to tell her about me. Well, she wasn't having any of it. She was very angry that I was, and she said, I, I don't want to be healed. And I said, well, sister, I won't ask God to heal you, but I'll say a prayer for you. She said, I have to, uh, I'm a victim sacrifice for the community. Oh, God help the community. <laughs> anyway, so I found out. What do you hear what happened? Some priest, God bless him, came to her when she was a young nun. She was, had very bad arthritis. And he told her, sister, Jesus is asking you to be a victim sacrifice for the community. And she was mad. She wasn't one bit happy that she was to do this. So she went through her whole life, miserable, angry, and I got outside the door anyway. And the wee, the wee sister says to me, Sister Breach, do you know who the victim sacrifice is? The community. <laughs> Nobody went near her. They were afraid of her. She was an example of somebody who got wrong I mean, I felt like saying to her, listen, darling, Jesus doesn't need you and the community don't need you to be a victim sacrifice. You'd be far better to beg Jesus to heal you. And maybe he would and get you out of this bed. But you know, how bad direction. But I only walk down the corridor <clears throat> and there's another nun, but she's 94. And she was like, she was so tiny in the bed, little tiny, tiny nun. And she was completely disfigured with arthritis but she had the most beautiful big smile so I went over to her and there was a student from the high school reading to her because she couldn't hold anything read and this little girl was doing um, visiting the home and she was reading to her some book so I said to her again my wee charismatic sister said oh sister we're just going to pray for you for healing I'm thinking 94 which kind so <laughs> So she said to me, um, she said, and Sister Breach had arthritis, just like you. And she looked at me as quick as a flash, she says, you lost it and I found it. <laughs> and then she told me, but she said, you know, Sister, Jesus has been so good to me. And she started telling me about all how loving the sisters were. And she, you could see this woman was completely at peace in herself. She, it was, she said, I don't mind because she said, everybody's so kind to me. People love to go and visit her. They came to see her from all over. Students that she had years before were still coming. What was the difference? The difference was that she had opened her soul. This other poor soul was miserable. And sometimes you meet people like that that they're furious and, they're, and I tell people, pray. Don't be asked saying, I have to suffer this for Jesus. Jesus doesn't need you to suffer. If he needs you, he'll ask you, but he'll give you the grace. And as Pope Francis says, God protect us from sorrow-faced saints. We'll never be saints if we have no joy. And you know, joy doesn't depend on the circumstances of your life because we all go through hard times. We all have suffering but we have to continuously pray and don't ever give up asking for the miracle. And one day you'll get the miracle because you'll arrive in heaven and you'll have a glorified body and a beautiful soul, which is more important. Now, this one, progressive healing. I love this story of the 10 lepers. The lepers were on their way and they're crying out to Jesus and they said to Jesus you know they wanted him to heal them so he went over and he touched them and we're told he said to them to go on their way they were healed it may not have been instantly it may not have happened right away an instant healing 
The man that was blind, Jesus took him outside. He asked him, can you see? And he said, yes, but everything looks like walking trees. And then Jesus put his hand on him a second time, and he could see. Jesus could have healed him the first time, but this is the beauty of praying continuously, that oftentimes just the testimony we heard tonight, it didn't happen instantly, but it did happen. And we live in the age of, if it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. But Jesus encourages us to keep praying. Same with alcoholics, with drug, with all the problems of today. I tell mothers, never give up. Never let go and believe. It doesn't matter what you, if you believe for your children, for whatever intentions, if you persevere in prayer, you win. You get the, 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 you have the answer. Because Jesus said, <clears throat> ask and you shall receive. He didn't say how long we were to ask. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. I, I, many times I, I tell the story of the blind woman in Clearwater that came to the prayer meeting. We had a big prayer meeting, charismatic prayer meeting, and she would come with her, her seeing eye dog. And she would come in every week, and she was very happy. And then one week, she came to the prayer meeting, and she was sitting behind me. And you know how we say in the expression, um, she, she bent over, tapped me on the shoulder, and she said, can I talk to you? Can I see you? <clears throat> and I said to her, I'll see you after the prayer meeting, even though she couldn't see physically, she was blind. She had a dog. Well, I only had those words out of my mouth. When the dog was sitting there, you know, beside the, along the church, she gets up, leaves the dog, and goes to the microphone on her own. And she gives this testimony. And as they say, I'm gobsmacked. I'm listening because I knew her. And I saw her coming every week to our prayer meeting. We all knew her. And she told the story that she went blind as a young person. With, she had multiple sclerosis and she lost her sight. And she said that she prayed for years. <clears throat> and when, when anybody, any healer, Protestant or Catholic came, she would always go and get them to pray with her. And this went on. She was very involved in the renewal. She got lots of people to pray with her. And then one day, she said this very well-known Protestant uh, preacher who had a gift of healing came to town. And he laid hands on her. And she went home, but she never expected to be healed. You know, there's people, <clears throat> she, who, you say, there's people who enjoy ill health. They enjoy being sick. They wouldn't know what to do if they got better. So she told us this. She said, you know, I went home and she said, the next morning I woke up and I could see the dog. And I kept saying, oh, it's not really, couldn't be true. And then she said, I never told anybody because then I started worrying. I'm going to lose the dog. I'm going to lose my social security. I'm going to lose all the benefits. <laughs> And nobody's going to open doors and stand back for me. And people are going to expect a lot of things. And she said, I really thought deep down, I don't really want it. And I have it now. So she never told anybody for two weeks. So she said when anybody would come to her house, she'd run up and, you know, pretend she was with her dog. And she said, after two weeks, pretending I'm blind, I thought I better go to the doctor. And the doctor said to her, ma'am, you could heal of the multiple sclerosis and the eyesight came back. And then she gave a whole teaching on it to us. And she said, you're probably thinking, where's that Protestant minister? I'd like to get him to pray with my daughter or with such a one. And she said, it wasn't a Protestant minister. She said, it was like stepping stones to a door. She said, every steps going up the door to a door, every prayer in those years, I prayed, God always give me a sense of peace and joy. And she said, 
it was a progressive healing because the last thing to be healed was my eyes, yes, and my disease. But all during those years, I was healed of hurt, of bitterness, of anger, of all th other things. So all those prayers worked. So she looked at the people and she said, you know, don't forget we're all in the state of process of being healed. It will only happen finally, completely, when we reach heaven. So keep praying, keep begging the Lord, even tonight. When you get leave here, don't say, nothing happened. Something will happen. So we're going to now, and I'll just give you one last uh, beautiful testimony. <coughs> oh, thank you, darling. Whiskey. <laughs> gin and tonic. Our gin and tonic, as they said. You know, there's this, uh, the passage, I love this, and I share this with you in context also with the Holy Eucharist. There's, do you remember the woman who said, if I could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I know I'll be healed. She wanted to make contact. She heard Jesus. She heard of his miracles. She was in a very bad condition. No doctor could help her. She went up and she caught the hem of his garment. And she was healed. Now she was present there with expecting faith. Others were there physically just wanting to see Jesus. When you and I go to Holy Communion, that's a perfect time for personal contact. The point of contact. We meet Jesus personally every day. <clears throat> but for Catholics, I tell Catholics, if you were told you had cancer, leukemia, some disease, sickness, depression, brothers and sisters, you as a Catholic have the privilege of coming to Jesus, the person of Jesus, living. You don't have to touch his garment. You actually take the body and blood of Jesus. And I could stand here for hours and tell you of experiences that Father Kevin and myself have had through the sacraments, all of the sacraments that we, I think of one, you know, the anointing of the sick that now is so, has such a wonderful renewal since the Vatican Council. We went in in, in the Philippines. President Cory Aquino had asked Father Kevin and myself when she was present to go into a businessman who was in a coma, dying, no hope. And Father Kevin, I tell the people at the anointing of the sick, when the priest puts the holy oil, and he touches the, that is Jesus. That's the point of contact with Jesus. The sacraments are all encounters with the person of Jesus to do something. Well, the sacrament of the anointing is to heal. And the sacrament of the Eucharist is also to strengthen and to bring healing and encouragement and blessings when we receive Holy Communion. But he put his hand on this man, anointed him with the sacrament. There was no hope. He'd been in a coma for a long time. The next morning, he woke up, and all he remembered was, he said he thought he saw Sintrez. He described Sintrez, but it was really me in brown. <laughs> anyway, he said uh, he felt something, and he was completely healed. That was the point of contact with Jesus. So I want you, when you go to Mass, or when you're getting some, if a person has cancer, or some sickness, don't be afraid. I know that our priests are overworked. There's so few of them now. But this sacrament is a wonderful healing sacrament. Father Kevin Scallon, that I work with, has shown so many people. A woman came to him after 25 years over in, in by Al Hallows there, who was dying of cancer of the throat, and all her children were around her bed. She was sent home to die from hospice. He anointed her. 25 years later, at the intercession prayer meeting over in Al Hallows, she came to look for him. She said, Father, I never came back to tell you. I wanted you to know that the moment you anointed me, the cancer began to disappear. And 25 years later, my children are grown up and I'm still perfect. That's what Jesus does. Praise God. Now, we are going to, we are going to have our healing service now. And we'll have a, a song of adoration, and then uh, 
Father will, who is here, after the song of adoration, um, he will go around the church. And you can remain seated. Don't try to kneel down. But don't close your eyes. Look at Jesus. And just put your hands out. Pray and believe that nothing is impossible. And also believe that Jesus doesn't see crowds. He sees individuals. Every one of you are important to him. Every one of you are special to him. He loves you. And the more you expect, the more he loves it. The more you open your life and give him everything, the more he can accomplish in your soul, in your body, your mind. So let us now, for a moment, have a, a song of worship, and then we will begin the healing service. And while, while Father Elliot is going through the, church, the auditorium, I'll stand here at the microphone, and I will join you in prayer, and we'll pray for whatever graces the Lord has for us. So let's now worship the Lord. Trust. 
in you. I trust in you. Jesus, I adore you, and I thank you, Jesus, for your presence right now here walking among us. Just remember what Jesus said to you, come to me, ask, and you shall receive. Jesus said, do not be afraid, put your trust in me, and look at the host, this is Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you and I adore you present here tonight. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have come to walk among us tonight to heal us. I pray, Lord, oh come, Jesus, reveal yourself to us. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us tonight. Allow us, Lord, to see you with new eyes. Take away our fears, Lord. So often we're afraid. So often, Lord Jesus, we are full of doubts. Oh, Jesus, please renew our faith. Give us divine faith. I pray this night that you will teach us how to pray. Tonight, Lord, look into the lives of each person here and increase our faith and our love. We pray that you open, Lord, our eyes, that you give us, Lord, eyes to see you with, eyes of faith, ears to hear you, Lord, a heart to love you, lips to praise you. Oh, please, Jesus, Heal us of any sinfulness, any addictions that causes us or leads us into sin, any anger, hatred, vile, anything, Lord, that is detrimental to our souls. Let us see, Lord. Heal us spiritually. Just as the man was lowered through the roof, and you said, your sins are forgiven. Give us the grace to hear these words. And Lord, we pray this night that you heal us in memories. Jesus, as you walk among us, heal us of the memories, memories that cause us great discouragement, fear, memories that cause us to be guilty, hurts of the past, Heal us, Lord, and heal those here tonight who may have been hurt, Lord. Give to us the grace to forgive. Lord, tonight we pray and we ask you to give us, Lord, new hearts, hearts of mercy and compassion, of healing. As we heard today, Lord, we must forgive and seek forgiveness. Give us that grace. Lord, I pray this night that you heal us. Heal us, Lord, of our sicknesses. Many come here with great pain. Many come suffering from incurable diseases. Jesus, I plead with you as you walk through this auditorium tonight. Please, Jesus, lay your hand, Lord, upon the person in this hall who is an incurable sickness. Jesus, I plead on their behalf 
that you would heal them, that you would give them strength. I beg you this night, Lord, that you would touch those who are taking treatment, those taking medication. Oh, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, I love you. I know that you're here. And I ask you right now, Lord, that you will touch those who have chronic pain, who suffer, Lord, continuously pains, chronic sicknesses that cause them to always be taking medication. I beg you for healing for them. I pray for those, Lord, who are facing surgery, those who have had surgery, those, Lord Jesus, that are in need of your healing hands through a doctor, a surgeon. Jesus, bless them this night. I pray also at this moment, Jesus, that you would reach in and bring blessings to every doctor, nurse, medical care person. Use these men and women to be your channels of healing. Bless these doctors and nurses. Lord, we pray for them, that they will have a great reverence for human life. As you walk through this auditorium, Lord, bless these men and women. We pray tonight, Lord, for those taking treatment and medication, that it will do more than prescribed and bring great healing and complete recovery. Oh, Lord Jesus, we adore you. We praise you. We thank you, Jesus. We pray this night, Lord, for our families, members of our families who are sick in hospital, those that we carry in our hearts, we bring them to this healing service. Jesus, heal them. I pray also tonight, Lord, that you will give to every, walk into every person that I've promised to pray for and touch them with your healing hand. Pray for those parents, Lord, who worry, concerned about their children, those who have lost their way, those who are addicted to drugs or alcoholism, those living, Lord, in act active sexual lives, Lord, not in your will, but evangelized by the world. Lord, I pray for those addicted to pornography, gambling, and all the different things that cause such heartache. Come, Jesus. Tonight, heal them. Jesus, I adore you. Just picture Jesus. He's walking around here. He just loves you. And the image I have is of that Jesus of mercy, pouring his love out. Lord, I pray also tonight for our country. I pray, Lord Jesus, for all the people. Jesus, I adore you. For the many, many people, Lord, in this country who have turned away from you, we are here because we believe. We are here because of your grace, Lord. But there are many on the streets of our city, many across our country, who have left you, Lord, who have allowed the spirit of the world to evangelize them. We pray for them tonight. We pray, Jesus, that you will raise up great prophets, prophetesses, to evangelize this island, to bring healing, to all those who need it. We plead with you, Lord Jesus, especially for those who are living violent lives, 
causing great suffering. We beg you to heal our land, that you, Lord, would please visit Ireland in the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, tonight for the church, all our bishops and priests. They will be great evangelists for all those who pass on the faith, for all the religious, consecrated men and women. Lord, bless them tonight also, that they may be channels of healing, that our priests and bishops may speak the truth in power, the proclamation of your gospel. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I adore you. Jesus, send your Holy Spirit upon us this night. Holy Spirit, give us a new Pentecost. Renew our faith. Renew us. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, let us see Jesus as the apostles did at Pentecost in a new and powerful way. Lord, tonight we pray, as here in Ireland we have an election soon, Jesus, we plead with you that you alone know what is needed in this land. We pray that in a sovereign way, Lord, that you would guide the people of Ireland, give them courage, give them, Lord, and for those candidates and people who are going up for public office, Lord, we ask the power of your Spirit upon them, that you guide those who vote, Lord. I pray too tonight, Lord Jesus, that you will send the grace of your Holy Spirit upon all those beautiful young people in our nation. Heal the many that need healing spiritually. Lord, visit, visit the families in this year of mercy. Pour out your mercy and healing and forgiveness. Heal marriages that are broken. Touch those with your love and power who have suffered. We know that the sacrament of matrimony is a beautiful sacrament, but the enemy would try to destroy it. Protect this sacrament in our land. Come, Jesus. Come with your healing love. Come, Jesus. Lord, I pray this night for world peace. As Father walks among us, I can't help thinking as we pray. Let's pray for peace that all these war-torn countries, all these horrible atrocities that are happening because of ISIS and because of violence and famines and greed. Jesus, we believe that you alone can change the course of the universe as every country, Lord, seems to be spinning out of control because you no longer are, are acknowledged. We here acknowledge you tonight. And Lord, help us never to lose hope that the war against evil is won because you won the victory. Jesus, whatever it takes, we know that you can undo the evil. You can, you have. Just give us the grace, Lord, that we need to respond to that grace. I pray for the many parts of the world where Christians are being slaughtered, where they're being sent into the roads of the world as refugees. Please heal them. Jesus, I adore you. 
Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I worship you. Lord, I pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the cardinals and bishops of the world. I pray that you, Lord, will protect Pope Francis, that through his leadership, a great renewal will come to the church. Jesus, we pray for the church, that it again, that our land will be renewed in its faith. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters of other faiths, that you, Lord, will, especially Christians, that all of us together, as Pope Francis desires, that the Christian world will be a light to the nations. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You know, I think as I'm praying of what Jesus said when, when he was with the Apostle Peter, he only asked one thing of Peter, and that's what tonight, as he walks among us, he's, I sense he's asking you. All Jesus said was, Peter, do you love me? Think about it. Peter had denied him. He had, you know, they left him when he was in his moment of agony. And when Jesus came, and you know, that's the most important question for you and me. Do you love me? It's not a feeling. It's a decision. You live your life loving Jesus by how you live. So I want you as... Jesus comes back to the altar. I just want you to, for a few moments in silence, to look at Jesus, look at the divine mercy. And that's the question Jesus is asking you here tonight. Do you love me? And I can't answer it for you. You're the only one can answer it. So let, for a few moments in silence, just can't dedicate your life again. Thank Jesus for the healing because you will be healed. You'll get a wonderful healing in whatever way Jesus sees you need it. But what he'd ask you now is, do you love me? John, Mary, Anne, Patrick, do you love me? And are you able to say like Peter, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Just be silent for a few moments and talk to Jesus. Tell him you love him. Beg him for the grace to say what Peter said. You know everything. You know I want to love you. It's not always easy because we build it on feelings. But it's a decision.